April the 15th, Backyard Farming, Florida. Well, we just about got the, the best out of the tomatoes that we planted. Uh, they lasted a lot longer, a lot longer growing season than uh, ones that we planted up in Georgia, just uh, conventional. We had several rows of tomatoes planted up there, and we have dug those up several weeks ago. Uh, cherry tomato plant, uh, we've pretty much given up on this one. One of the things I'd like to share with you is uh, my experience with the hydroponics, things that I would uh, change about this system. This, <clears throat> the outdoor system, I really like the way that it worked out. Uh, the only thing that I would, two things I would change. Number one, the return line, I would make it probably twice as large as the supply line, particularly if you use a uh, a high capacity pump. Now when I switched to 12 volts and went to a sump pump I went up to 350 gallons per hour and I found that that it would overflow <clears throat> so I had to get the timer set just right um, to prevent that. The other issue is that I built this thing a little bit too close um, to the greenhouse. You need to have room on both sides particularly if you're growing something that's got a vine or it's going to need support. It just makes it a lot easier to um, to get around to it. Now the other thing that you might notice here is that I pulled this tomato plant out right here. I had a situation with with some root rot and uh, so I'm kind of in the recovery mode right now with these uh, plants on the outside I've got I've been pumping uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, for several days uh, I finally put some nutrients in there this morning on the indoor system <clears throat> I don't think I would uh, build a header like this anymore um, I was sort of obsessed when I built this thing with trying to get all the liquid to drain out of these pipes uh, when this when the system uh, cycled off and the uh, flood drain cycle. Now I don't think that's critical at all. As a matter of fact, uh, a little water standing in the tubes is probably advantageous. I think the next time when I am go ahead and take this system down, which I plan to do this weekend, I'm going to go ahead and remo remove the, the caps off the end and clean the system. I'm going to go ahead and cut the tubes off and pull the uh, PVC out and I'm going to come up with a uh, an arrangement where the feed line goes actually into that rubber boot. <clears throat> Use a, probably a bulkhead connector or something like that. It would be a lot better. Obviously this system, uh, there's not enough space here. These tubes are too close together. Uh, it might be suitable uh, for growing uh, lettuce or something like that, but uh, you can see it's the other thing that I did wrong on this particular one is that <clears throat> I put the uh, the reservoir right underneath these tubes and uh, I'm going to move that, I'm going to move it uh, some distance completely away from the system so that uh, it'll be easy enough to fill. In this case I had to crawl crawl through the tomato plants uh, to uh, to add nutrients and, and uh, fluids to this system. The other issue, um, the way the root rot thing got cranked up was I had a plant that uh, it was an eggplant and it, uh, for some reason, we had several in this tube, it just started dying and uh, I kind of went into the, the rescue mode. Uh, my advice and what I plan to do from now on, if a plant doesn't perform properly, uh, I'm going to jerk it out. Uh, particularly if it shows any kind of signs of, of disease or whatever, you want to get it out of the system before it contaminates everything. The earth box uh, tomato plants have also pretty much met their demise. Uh, I'm in the process of just kind of letting them die down and still getting a little bit of produce off of them, but 
plan to keep the uh, tomato plant growing uh, session going and uh, the way I'm doing that right now is if you have a plant that's doing pretty good just get you a get you a sucker off of it like so and I'm using these little perfect start <coughs> sponges so you just take your take your plant stick her in there like that put a little bit of water in there and lay it in there and uh, give it a few days and uh, actually this this plant I put in here uh, just this morning you see after a few days it'll it'll get started and then you can go ahead and put your aggregate around the, the sponge and you're good to go so my plan right now is to shut down the inside system completely completely take it apart clean it up and get it ready for probably this winter I'm going to go ahead and put the plastic back on and while it's still as hot as it is right now I'm just not going to use the system inside I'm going to go ahead and try to keep the outside system running and uh, maybe when I get uh, get everything put back together and cleaned up I'll give you a shot from inside and that's it for today Backyard Farming Florida <laughs>